History is a funny thing. When you look back on it, days slip into oblivion. Years. Decades. Entire ages pass quietly before our eyes, carrying off memories to be tucked away in dusty boxes and forgotten corners. But here's the extraordinary part. History is also alive. It reaches beyond itself into every part of our community, shaping ideas, education, economy. Our history begins in 1891. Conway was a young cotton town, population 1207. The Conway Board of Trade was established by Captain W. W. Martin to help recruit Hendricks College. This new business organization raised $50,000 for the effort, and Hendricks moved to Conway. The Board of Trade successfully recruited Central College two years later, and Conway tilled new ground as a place of learning. The Conway Board of Trade would eventually be renamed the Conway Area Chamber of Commerce. At the turn of the century, the business community led by future Governor George Donaghy recruited Arkansas State Normal School to Conway, setting the stage for decades of future growth. Education was thriving, and so were the people. Soon, it was time to improve services for this growing community. The Chamber helped establish a municipal sewer system, a major undertaking that improved the overall quality of life. After World War I, the Chamber continued to invest in education, initiating a $30,000 SOS campaign to save the Conway public school system, and contributing another $30,000 for a new dorm at Central College. Seeing a need for a modern hotel, the Chamber initiated a successful campaign to issue stock to build the Revelo Hotel, better known as the Bachelor Hotel. By 1929, Conway found itself in the throes of the Great Depression, a crisis that hit Arkansas early and hard. The city was faced with losing Hendricks College. The Chamber, led by Chairman Joe Fronthal, pledged $150,000 to the Methodist Church to keep Hendricks College in Conway. In order to raise the needed funds, Conway Corporation was formed to manage the city's municipal electric power plant, pledging future revenue to finance bonds and ultimately save Hendricks. Extra revenue assisted Central College, Arkansas State Normal School, Conway Public Schools, and St. Joseph Parochial Schools. The business community's commitment to education solidified again in the midst of America's most difficult economic situation. In 1933, at the urging of Arkansas businessman Harvey Couch, the Chamber issued stock to establish First National Bank. It represented Conway's tenacity and hard-won hope for a more stable, post-depression economy. The Chamber was committed to supporting that economy, even running the Toadsuck Ferry for a number of years to ensure that Perry County residents would trade in Conway. To continue post-war economic diversification, the Chamber partnered with Conway Corporation, raising $110,000 to build a facility for International Shoe, the first large industry in the city after World War II. A year later, the Chamber raised money for the construction of Lake Conway. Then, in 1954, the Conway Chamber of Commerce and Conway Corporation joined forces again raising $100,000 to build a manufacturing facility for Verco. Conway was establishing its own industrial economy. A modern economy brought more people. Those people demanded modern services. In 1955, the Chamber petitioned the City Council to inaugurate citywide garbage pickup, a move that helped keep Conway fresh, clean, and healthy. In the late 1950s, the Chamber purchased 404 acres of land for the Arkansas Children's Colony to serve mentally disabled children and later, children afflicted with German measles. At $113,000, it was the largest real estate purchase in recent times. Shortly after, in 1959, the Chamber reached out to area businesses. 
they responded with $32,000 in gifts, and the Chamber used those funds to form Conway Development Corporation the city's first nonprofit economic development organization and the chamber's new partner in the modern day world of economic development. This momentum carried Conway into the early 60s when the chamber and Conway Development Corporation broke ground on the Conway Industrial Park, the first master planned, fully served industrial park of any small city in Arkansas. It was a time of progress and accomplishment. It was also a time of connection. In 1964, the Chamber successfully lobbied for construction of Toadsuck Bridge. A few years later, manufacturing giant Kimberly Clark moved to Conway, followed by the formation of Demographics Inc., now known as Axiom. Both businesses purchased sites in the Conway Industrial Park. Conway's central location and industrial amenities continued to attract new opportunities. The 1970s saw more success as the Conway Industrial Park filled. It was time for the Chamber to have a permanent home. Chairman Bill F. Johnson spearheaded a building project in 1977 to move the Chamber of Commerce to a $100,000 building at Main and Parkway on a site provided by the city. Progress continued through the 80s. In 1989, Tokusin USA Inc. announced a new plant in Conway. All of this hard work was recognized in 1993, when the Conway Chamber received its first accreditation by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. At that time, only four Chambers of Commerce in Arkansas were accredited. Five years later, the Chamber broke ground on a new building on the former site of Hegel Lumber. The year 2000 ushered in a new age of innovation for a new economy. Conway Development Corporation purchased 186 acres for a technology park called The Meadows. In 2008, Hewlett Packard claimed 26 of those acres and brought hundreds of new jobs. During that time, the CDC purchased an additional 550 acres for the new Conway Airport, shifting progress from land to sky. In 2010, the Chamber led more than 1,400 area residents through the Conway 2025 community-wide visioning process. And in 2013, the Chamber's own vision was celebrated far beyond our city when the Conway Area Chamber of Commerce was named Chamber of the Year by the Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives at its annual conference. It's all part of a long, rich history that has moved Conway forward. The decisions the Chamber made over the last 125 years are still making a difference today. Not just in echoes, but in actions. So what happens next? History will continue to unfold, and those good works from the past will play out before us. We could be content with that. We could be along for the ride. Or we could start making history again. We could go full steam ahead investing in a brilliant future that will still be taking shape five years from now, 25 years, 125 years. Let's build new places to laugh and play, ways to move and opportunities that move us. Let's build a future and leave a legacy. Because Conway doesn't wind down, we wind up. Join the Conway Chamber of Commerce and see where we can go together.